Okay, so um, Sonam, you've obviously done this like a zillion times. Uh, I don't know if I've done this a zillion <laughs> times, but I've done it enough. Okay, um, so I'm the nervous one. Huh? So I'm the nervous one. Not sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. You Thank absolutely you, Marcy. look Thank you so gorgeous. Much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, everybody first up is very, very excited. You're literally doing this for the first time after... My, no, I did uh, one, I've done one or two things, but I've just uh, moved back to Bombay uh, with my husband. Um, Finally. Finally, yeah, we, we were in London for a couple of years and um, we've decided to move back because uh, we want our child to be around his grandparents, both sides. Um, so yeah, I'm back in Mumbai and I'm back at work. That is definitely so. good news <laughs> for all of us. So that means we get to see you a lot more. Now. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> all right, um, so I'm very quickly, sometimes before we receive the big good news or bringing the most most uh, precious gift. Can we please request the media to settle down? We cannot start like this. Sorry about that. Not at all. I'm sure you're used to it. <laughs> Sometimes before we receive the good news about bringing a child into this world, we have so many questions um, that run through our mind. What were yours? And, and, what did you, and how did you address them? So my husband and I got married uh, right before the pandemic and we wanted to take two years uh, just to enjoy our married life and, you know, just have a good time before we decided to, you know, we wanted to have a child. And I remember it was uh, February of 20, no, it was January of 2020, uh, New Year's. And we were like, okay, I think this is the year that we're going to try and have a child. And obviously the pandemic happened and um, we got scared and uh, we just decided that we could wait till the pandemic was over. Even though, I, I don't know if everybody remembers at that time, we didn't know when or how and it was quite scary, uh, especially the beginning of the pandemic. So it started settling down uh, by the end of the year, but then the second wave happened in India, which was again, pretty scary um, and so again we decided to delay it a little bit uh, we were seeing all sorts of scary things happening to uh, women and to you know older people and parents and children etc cetera, etc cetera, with comorbidities again we decided to wait and um, then we said okay I think it's enough uh, let's try and that's when but in this time, I was doing a lot of research. I was reading a lot about fertility, about what are the right things to you know, take, how to eat, the kind of lifestyle you need to lead. And I realized that I needed to, more than anything else, I needed to lead a very stress-free lifestyle. Um, and yes, and the supplements, and you know, sleeping on time and eating right and all of those things come in and uh, they play a huge part as well. So I'm very happy that uh, Prega News is taking a more holistic and a full approach to uh, pregnancy. Right. I love how as women we're so accurate about the dates in our lives. No? Yes. We just know all the dates that things yeah. happen, like you mentioned the New Year's that we decided. Um, do you think ovulation tracking is important? It's very important uh, because contrary to what we were told or we know from like, I don't know, that it, you just can't get pregnant in every month of the, every day of the month. You know, there are some days where you're more fertile and, um, you know, and everybody's um, ovulation I mean, a doctor will tell you this, but because as moms, we know because we've tried, you know, you try to get pregnant, everybody's ovulation date is different. So it's not the same day for everyone. Like everybody doesn't have a 30-day cycle or a 28-day cycle. I have a 32-day cycle. You know, some people have a 28-day cycle. Some people even go up to 35 days. And those five days when you're ovulating before and after, the ovulation are those five days when you're the most fertile and an ovulation tracker is your best friend at that point. 
because those are the five days where you are most likely to get pregnant. Right. So I did use an ovulation tracker with an app uh, to get pregnant. Uh, there was a there was an app called uh, uh, there was an I don't remember the app right now, but there's a yeah. really good app that I had, which you know I would check my temperature temperature and then pee on a stick to know you know am I ovulating or not ovulating. So yes, it was my best friend. Um, so I'm, I'm so glad that they're coming up with, um, they have these beautiful ovulation yeah. uh, trackers. Right. Um, you know, you mentioned about eating healthy, eating right, leading a more holistic life. Tell me, apart from the supplements of the obvious, which is iron, folic acid, how did, what were the other supplements that were important and how did you include it in your diet and meal plan? So honestly, um, I spoke to an amazing doctor called Dr. Gauri. And um, she is a Tamil, she's a Tamilian and she's from India. Uh, but she lives in London right now and she used to be an OBGYN uh, with the NHS in the UK. And she's as Indian as she, like when you meet her, you think she's like the sweetest old Indian auntie who's giving you the best advice. And, uh, but she's a brilliant, brilliant doctor. She was the first one to come up with water births in the UK. Um, but she was a surgeon. And she decided that, you know, we should have, like in India, we prefer natural births, but everywhere else in the world, they go straight away for C-section. So she told me that, you know, we have to eat the Indian way, which is a full, like, you know, we have all these like new things where we're doing like high protein and this and that. She's like, you just have to eat a balanced anti-inflammatory diet, which is basically Indian khana, <laughs> which is, you know, roti, bhaji, dal, if you want to have, if you're non-vegetarian, then a chicken or a fish and dahi. And I just had a balanced meal and I was walking and I was doing a little bit of exercise and I was taking my supplements and just being simple and not going crazy on like crazy diets really helped my health and my, I had a great pregnancy. And uh, saw that. yeah, I had, a, I had a great pregnancy. I put on a lot of weight but I had a great pregnancy and because I just kept it easy and simple and I wasn't eating sugar or like the gonke laddus and all of that that your moms give you. I was just eating normal khana. Right. Um, the most magical moments and I think if you ask any mother, what are the most magical moment of your life that kind of transforms you is when you see those two pink lines. What was that moment for you like? I think as soon as I delivered my baby um, and he was in my arms. I think it was one of the best things that I felt because you have this like euphoria as well, yes. um, especially after you deliver. I had a natural birth, uh, mostly drug free as well. So it was a very, it was an amazing moment because my husband was next to me and my, um, my doctor was uh, my, one of my mom's close friends and I'd grown up with her. And so I just, just people who I loved were around me and then my parents were there and my sister was there and my in-laws were there and it was just the best, best moment of my life. I think it's life changing, right? When you right. have a child. Um, you know, you just mentioned that I put on a lot of weight. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask you this because each one of us sees a different version of ourselves, right? Uh, you suddenly start feeling uncomfortable with that same body who yeah. has the ability to nurture and, you know, prepare for childbirth. You also had to play your part of being a Bollywood actor. You, and, you know, you were part of so yeah. many covers. How was that experience to be part of all of these photo shoots, being constantly shots, shot, but not in your body that, you know, you're older of that. So I never, I, I, as soon as I de delivered my child, my main focus was taking care of him and then taking care of myself. Yeah. It wasn't, oh, I need to lose my weight in like two months or three months. I took, I've taken one whole year to lose all my weight. I did it slowly. I did it steadily. And I made sure that I was present. And a lot of moms go through postnatal depression. And you know, you feel like you're in somebody else's body. Um, once you deliver, you feel like your stomach is gonna go back in, but it's still there. And you feel, oh, my body's gonna look the same after I deliver my child. 
and then you realize your child is only like three and a half kgs and the, all the other weight is just you. <laughs> and, um, but I didn't, I didn't go on a crash diet. I didn't do any of those things because I used to be a very big girl um, in, in, when I was younger and through a lot of, um, a lot of hard work, I have realized that you have to love yourself no matter what, no matter the stretch marks, no matter the weight fluctuations, no matter what. As long as you're healthy mentally and physically, that's all that matters. And you will eventually feel like yourself and nobody should be in any rush to get anywhere. And um, you know, the media has a lot of um, good qualities and uh, so do a lot of actors. We have a lot of good qualities, but we're also desperate to get back into shape and get back to work. And that puts a bad precedent for mothers who are not in the same profession as us. And I didn't want to set that example. I'm so glad that you so said that. So I made sure that I was seen through my a huge <laughs> round of applause for that one, guys. If, if icons such as her start doing that, it really takes off the pressure. Yeah, and I was like, it doesn't matter, I will be photographed no matter what size I am uh, after my pregnancy. So I did a couple of events and I didn't shy away from my size. I didn't shy away during my pregnancy when I gained that weight. And I gained that weight because, I don't know, some people gained that weight, I wasn't eating anything extra. So it's just, that some people don't gain any weight yeah. during pregnancy, they gain like six or seven kgs, are. but some people, my mom gained 25 kgs with each child. So. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick check here. Sonam, you mentioned you gained a lot of weight. How much weight did you gain? 36 kgs. 36? She, she beat me. How but many women gained? You did not gain 36 I and was, lose it. I was, I was 58. I was very, I was too thin before I got pregnant. I have a tendency to be too thin because my it's genetic. So I, I was very thin. Right now, I'm still like around eight, nine kgs more than... So 36, and you 36. did that. How many women here gained more than 20 kilos? Just, oh, almost okay. everyone. How many more than 30 kilos? Okay, no, just... How many, like at the right 12 to 15? Okay, I don't like you guys. Y'all are just very mean people. No, I mean, it's, it's I'm telling you, it's... Like, I don't